Let's look at another example. So uh, suppose we're doing uh, spam detection in email. We have a data set of six emails. Uh, four of them are spam, two of them are non-spam. And we want to predict if a new email is going to be spam or not. Right? So estimate the naive Bayes. Um, first thing you, you always do is the priors. Two thirds chance that it's spam, one third chance that it's not spam. Um, the next thing you do is you take all the individual words that you ever saw in your emails. You construct a vocabulary out of those words, and then you start counting how many times did you see this word in ham emails versus spam emails, right? So the word password, we saw it uh, one, two times in spam emails, so it's two out of four, the probability of seeing password given that you're spam, right? So given that you're spam, that's why all the denominators are four, and two I see two times. Um, and one out of two in the non-spam class because uh, that word has, uh, that, that D, D3 has the word password in it, and I only have two <coughs> non-spam emails. Okay, so these are my class conditional probabilities. This is the probability of seeing password given spam, and uh, this is one half is the probability of seeing the word us given that you're non-spam. Okay, so uh, that's all the estimation that you need for naive Bayes. Now, uh, the next thing that happens is you get a new email, and that email says, review us now, right? And that email has a new word, now. Uh, we've never seen that word before, so uh, being good machine learning people, we throw it away, right? Because there is nothing we can do it. If, you, if you've never seen anything uh, about this particular feature, you throw it away uh, until the time that you have to retrain, right? So, so that, that email will get concatenated to just review us. And now what we want to do is we want to predict what is the probability that it's spam versus non-spam. How do we do this? Um, we take this email, we convert it into our attribute value representation. What is that going to be? So um, let's see. It has only two words, review and us. It doesn't have any other words. So its representation is going to be that. Zero <coughs> means that the first word in our vocabulary, password, does not occur in that email. And yes, you have to keep around the words that don't occur. Don't, 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 don't forget them, otherwise probabilities don't come out right. right. So password did not occur. Review occurred. Uh, what is it? Send did not occur. Us occurred. And then your and account did not occur. So I have zero values for all of those attributes and ones for the words that actually occurred. So what's the probability of those things? Right? We're doing naive base. So we're going to compute the probability for each one attribute individually and then multiply them all together. So the first one, probability of zero, what does this mean? This means that the word password did not occur in that email. And we want to see the probability that the word password doesn't occur, assuming that we are in the spam class. Right? How do we compute it? It's just one minus the probability that it did occur. Right? And the probability that it did occur is that number right there. <coughs> So anytime the word doesn't occur, you have one minus something. Anytime the word does occur, you have, uh, you have just the probability from the table. So take these numbers, multiply them all together, you get some number. Uh, so that's for the spam. Next thing, you do the same exact thing for the non-spam class. It's the same binary string, only now we're going to be using the second column of that table. So the word password didn't occur, so it's 1 minus 1 half. Uh, let's see, the word send didn't occur, again, one minus one half. The word review occurred, so you have um, probability of one, okay? Compute all of those things, you get two numbers, and then the last thing that you do, so I guess uh, this is what you get for ham, this is what you get for spam, multiplied by the priors, one third and two thirds, uh, plug it into Bayes' rule, and you get this prediction. <coughs> So now comes the cute thing, now that they've uh, run off. Uh, given this probability, how would you classify this email? Is it ham or spam? Is it useful? Yeah, so you wouldn't throw it in the bin. OK. Now, a look at D3. Oh, sorry, no, D4. So we D4 is a spam training example, right? So you have a training example that is labeled as spam, and we computed all the probabilities. There is no mistake here, really. So we did everything right, and we assign, we would, our classifier would classify it as non-spam. Right. 
How is that possible? What's wrong? Affected by what? I was affected by other examples. What did we do wrong? Yes, okay. The only thing that we did wrong was assume independence, right? So that is the only flaw in this entire thing. Uh, now, in general, this doesn't mean the classifier is flawed. You will see lots and lots of examples where the best classifier you have will miss incorrectly predict the class. Why? Because not all classes are separable. It's not always possible to separate the positives from the negatives. The easiest example, you know, I could have the same email with two contradictory labels. One user thought it was spam, another user thought it was a great investment opportunity. <laughs> right? And he labeled it as non-spam. So what you have is you have two identical emails with two different labels, and no classifier is going to be able to separate them. Right. <clears throat> so things like that happen. We will see classifiers that don't allow it to happen, but naive Bayes is not one of those. 